and welcome to another installment of our day-to-day -day lives. Today, we're going to be having tea, chocolate cookies from the 18th century, and uh, me personally, I'm going to make something more than that because I'm starving and I can't just live off of chocolate. Well, I mean, some days I can, but not today. <laughs> I can't do it. So we have the water going over here over the fire and I think it's just about ready for the tea. And later on once we get enough coals I gotta make something to eat and I was looking around in here and the only thing we have to eat are eggs. The only thing. So I mean we have eggs and chocolate but how in the world am I supposed to combine that to make a savory dish? And we've been putting good use to this mysterious egg box that we've gotten. Yeah. So we only have three eggs too so that's all I gotta eat today for me. But I'll make do later on. So let's uh, talk about what kind of teas we're going to be making today. This is where we keep all of our teas. Our tea box. Our tea box. Our mysterious thing box. How do you pronounce that? How, how do you think I know how to pronounce that more than you do? Lapsing. Lapsing. Soy. Soshan. So, Soshan. Lapsang Soshan. Lapsang Soshan Smoky Black Tea. <laughs> this is from the brand Oliver Puff and Company, based in Charleston. So, this is an American brand. Uh, smoky Black Tea. It says brew at 195 degrees for three to five minutes. This is a loose tea. Black inside. It's black tea. Can I smell it? I suppose. Oh. Hmm. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> Smoky. Well, I'm excited about trying it. Huh. I'm over. I'm a green tea person, and he's a black tea person. I don't think we have any green tea in here today. No. Let's see what else. Boo Boohee. This is also from Oliver Puff and Company, Charleston Colonial Bohe. Tea. This is also a black tea, but this is more of a smoky black tea. We've got all these teas from our friend Candy, her mm -hmm. store Sassafras Creek in St. Genevieve. She has, what do you say, 20 different flavors? Right. Yeah, at least 20 different flavors. This is, uh, this looks exactly like the other one, but they're both black teas, so that would be why. I like that. Mm. I like that more than I that. like this more too. It's so hard to explain it. Almost a raspberry scent. Almost. Well, smoky wood. Smoky raspberry ish black tea ish. 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 <laughs> well, let's, not... let's try that one for sure. Okay. We will. What else is in there? So we have another Lapsung Susan. Yeah, this is, I think this is the bigger one. This is 85 grams, this is 28 grams, so it's available in different sizes too. The only other thing we have in here today, we don't have our, our other box is uh, currently in our small cabin. Oh, have, this is medicine. It has uh, the oolong tea and there's a gun smoke or gun powder, I believe it's called. And there's the green tea that you have, but they're in, they're in our camp box. Right. Elsewhere, but this here, we have their other products they have, which is hot toddies and uh, the ginger and the wassail wassail so this would go in cider we're not going to be having this today no but so on and so forth <laughs> no oh i had no idea that we even had these until i looked <laughs> through this box or else keeping secrets from me so we have these two redware mugs that say saint genevieve on them 1735. they were a gift from mm -hmm. candy she has them in her store. They're red, red, red wear mugs from SJ Pottery and uh, they're St. John's souvenirs. Yeah. And uh, they were a, I think they were a Christmas gift. I had no idea we even had them. Well, they but now them. we're going to use them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but we got to wash them first because they've been sitting in here. So we got to make sure that we get the dust off of them. Okay, so we're keeping that one. So we're going to do the Boohee and the Lapsung. Right. Thank you everybody that's mm -hmm. watched the, uh, the previous videos mm -hmm. on uh, Early American this week. 
Also, before you ask where can we see these being made, and before I forget to tell you, please go over to Early American Channel to watch these yes, being made. Yes, please. Yes. So let me get that water off fire. Oh, and also, it's honey here. Oh yeah, don't forget the honey. Yeah, this honey's been sitting by the fire, not in the fire, of course, but just to soften up. Softened a little bit. Because it got really cold overnight and it crystallized a bit. So we just set it by the fire. This is raw honey from my dad's beehives because my dad keeps beehives. So all of our honey and all of our eggs are from my dad's. <laughs> yeah. Thank Thanks, you, Jim. Dad. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I love blue wear stuff like this. I have a blue. Yes, yeah, so you look very dashing. Thank you. <laughs> He's getting jealous because I said I... I love this. <laughs> so let me get that water off. What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Can I have a rag? I don't even know. Oh, I think over there. Thank you. Thank you. You can have a cookie, Ron. Okay, thank you. You can have as many of them as you want. I would pay a man $20 to eat this whole plate of cookies because these are the sweetest cookies I've ever come across in my life. They only have three ingredients in them. If, if you eat more than one, you feel like you're gonna go into a coma, sugar coma. Now they sound like hard blasts or well, something. Well, that's because the center is right. kind of hollow. Right, but it's... They're crispy. very hollow and crispy. They're mm -hmm. actually puffs. really nice. Yeah. The original name of them in the original receipt book was chocolate puffs. So not chocolate cookies, but chocolate puffs. Mm -hmm. They are good though, mm -hmm. but two is my limit for today. Right. That's why I need something besides these. <laughs> I need eggs. I need something. And yes, we use okay, the largest right. water kettle we can find. Right. Well, this one, we usually just keep it on our wood stove all day long so that we constantly have a supply of hot water mm -hmm. just in case we need it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, let's see here. So I picked this up at a reenactment. It's a heart-shaped thingy my bob if you know the name of this please let me know <laughs> but you put the loose leaf tea in here and you uh, you just dip it into your cup and you let it sit there and it has a long handle so you don't get burned so you can mix it like a spoon right. you want me to pour the water up if you could please actually first let's put the honey in there oh okay thank you To help dissolve it. Right. <clears throat> Hope everybody's staying warm. It's mm -hmm. been uh, really nasty the last week or so, but uh, the forecast is looking pretty nice this coming week in the 60s here in Missouri. Mm -hmm. Right. We're looking looking forward to that. Yeah, it's okay, Ron. Go ahead. All right. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. Mm -hmm. I can probably get rid of that now. So far. Mm. Downside is I only have one of these. I wish I had five of them. We're gonna have to do it one at a time. <laughs> All I have today to eat are eggs and chocolate cookies and I only have one of these tea things. Life is tough in winter time, Ron. Well, you make yours first. Well, thank you. Or right, i tell you what, mm. let's make one cup of the, uh, what's it, uh, lapsing and yeah. then make one cup of that and we'll, We'll try a sip of each and see which one's our favorite. That's a good idea. And these are teas that were popular in the 18th century. And the early 19th century. How neat. Yeah, very convenient. Genius. Right. 
If only I had thought of it. Okay, just let it sit in there for a bit. We have a guest here with us today, don't we? We do. <laughs> you may have caught a glimpse of him yes. in the, uh, what's that called again? The lemon cake? It's a... Uh, almond lemon cake? It's an almond cake, but honestly, it's more of a lemon cake. <laughs> I think they call it an almond cake because it uses almond flour only, and that's why. But when you try it, you just get hints of lemon. So it's an almond lemon cake. Mm -hmm. His name is Alfred. His full name is Alfred Turnip McMittens. McMittens? Mc, Mc, McMittens. That is his formal, God-given birth name. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a boy. Yep. Mr. Alfred. <laughs> yes, Mr. Alfred has joined us for tea today. He's excellent company. He's very quiet. He never speaks back. Yeah, he doesn't talk back. Yeah, he doesn't talk back. <laughs> Just sits there. Yeah. Like he almost didn't know he was there. Right. He doesn't eat much. He doesn't... No. He never complains, really. Requires no maintenance. He's fabulous. I, I mean, I can't complain about him at all. And he has this amazing necklace here. It's a strawberry. So he's the perfect pet. <laughs> Yep, he, he's got a little rocking chair too, doesn't he? He does. You want to get his rocking chair and show him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I saw this, I just, I knew I had to have it. Here you go. In this high chair. This is a fully functional rocking chair. It's built to be... A miniature of a full size one. Yeah, it's that's real fully deal. functional. They came together. By the way, <laughs> can you tell? They they kind of fit for each other. Is it starting to get a smell? Yes, hmm. but I can still see this halfway through it, so it's still clear yet. So maybe another minute or two till it gets darker. The tea. Hmm. Assuming it, it gets dark like modern I don't think like it's clear. Tea. If you look at it like this, it's kind of brownish. I think we need to wait a little longer. Oh yeah, we'll wait. A little stronger. Mm -hmm. And when I found this receipt, I like the fact that it doesn't have flour in it. So if you, anyone out there has a sensitivity to flour or you have celiac disease, you could try these out. Mm -hmm. Three ingredients only. And the modern way to make it is just use cocoa powder. If you use cocoa powder, that's the easiest way to do it. You'll have these cookies ready in the oven in less than 10 minutes. They're so easy to make. The hardest part would be whipping up the egg whites. But if you use um, an electric mixer, that's not a problem. I've actually never owned an electric mixer. But I think that would help. <laughs> or a whisk. Yeah. A modern whisk. That's going to be hot. Right. It's a good thing I have a very high heat tolerance. Hmm. Oh, that came out pretty easy. Nice. Well, we're all packed up. We're leaving on our journey tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Hopefully, it'll be good weather to see Ron's dad. Yep. Next Rivers up. might be up though with all the oh, snow that's melting. True. That is true. We'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully they're not up too high. They get pretty swift around here. I'm a lot shorter than he is, so if the river's up high, maybe he's fine mm -hmm. and I'm not. It's <laughs> probably cut off. <laughs> here shouldn't be. Right. If it is, we gotta redo this whole thing. If it is, we have a problem. This is the one that smells a bit better. Yeah, that's the uh, colonial booty. booty. Yeah, I like that. You know, there's actually a description on here. Booty, pronounced a booty, is a distinctive black tea blend with a light smoky flavor. It was so popular in colonial times that booty became the common word for tea. Wow. It, it was imported in larger quantities than all other teas combined. And it was the majority of tea destroyed during the tea tax protests in revolutionary America. Oh, wow. 
So this is the most popular tea in America back then. The, yeah, this was the most popular tea in the 18th century by far. So much so that bohi was another word for tea. So, Already my favorite. So would you like some bohi? Bohi. Bohi. You're right. Did you already put some in? Yes, ma'am. Oh, good job. I wasn't looking. Well, I learned something new today. I didn't know that bohi used to mean tea. So we want to answer a few questions that we've been seeing. Uh, what questions would you like to answer? So we've noticed on Early American Channel that we've gotten quite a new subscriber since the last time we've answered a few questions that people keep seeing, that they seem to keep asking. Are we married? No, we're not married. We're not married. <laughs> been, no, we're only dating. <laughs> we've been dating since uh, May of 20, yes. 20, yes. 2021. Actually, our romance has played out on our channel. So yeah, the it's... very first video that he was ever in back at the Stevenson house, I only met you two weeks before that. Yeah. So there you go. It's really played out on screen for it, you guys. It was all real. I uh, think that video came out the first week of May or something. Something like that. Maybe I only knew him for a week by that point. I, yeah. I'm not quite sure. But we just met. Yeah. The first time we mm -hmm. met was uh, at the exhibit that I've worked on mm -hmm. at the Museum Grand Ocean and you came down. Yes. And... Uh, so you haven't missed the wedding. Nope, you ain't missed the wedding. No, you haven't missed it. We... Hell, if there was a wedding, nobody invited me to it either. I missed it. Yeah. We're, we haven't gotten married. <laughs> and, and as far as weddings on camera go, we will probably wait until our real wedding to make one big mess at one time. Because mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of work staging this with all the people. So we're going to wait till our real we wedding. do the real thing. Right. And then... Yeah, then you guys will see the real yeah. wedding. We don't know when. Probably and a couple of years. We've got to yes. get uh, some other things done first. Yes. What are we waiting for? We're waiting to have a proper house. This yeah. is just a starter We're house. Gonna, gonna we need build. we need land. So we've been saving up for land. Because I want a homestead. I want at least 10, 10 acres. acres. <laughs> at least 10 acres. I want chickens. I want ducks. I want a well. I want an orchard. I want a vegetable garden. I want berry bushes. I want an herb garden. Donkeys. If we have room, I would like a donkey. <laughs> um, but I would like a proper house. And one that we own, of course. Not one that we're, we rent. Right. And uh, then we will, hopefully, God willing, get married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you haven't missed the wedding. <laughs> yeah, you missed the wedding. Yes, and we are a couple in real life. Yes. Yay! Run! I love you. <laughs> Real life. I love you too. Yes, we spend all day together. He's my best friend. We're both equally insane. <laughs> and that's why we Speak get along. Speak for yourself. <laughs> well, maybe I'm a little bit more so. <laughs> nope. Mm. Really glad I met you. Thank you. I'm really glad I met you too. I hope everyone out there can meet their other half. Yes. It, and... It's nice after years of mm. not having the person when you finally meet them. It's really nice. Then you know. You yeah. know right away who the one is. I think this one's ready. Yeah, I know which one mm -hmm. the one is here. It's going to be this one because that was... You think this one's going to taste better? I think so. It smells so good. I've just got a feeling. Okay. Let me take a sniff of that. Okay. I didn't sniff it yet. Let's see. Okay. This one smells significantly more smoky. Yeah, that one's Oh, smoother. great. I don't even remember which one's which now. This, this one's is, the Colonial? Yeah, this is the Boohee. And this one is Lapsang. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Lapsang. No, you... this one is Colonial. Yeah. Okay. I'll hold on to the Lapsang. Okay. You hold on to the Colonial. Do you so know there isn't... Stuff. I don't think there's a description... Oh, no, there is a description about the Lapsang. Lapsang's flavor is strong and smoky. Meant to complement the natural taste of black tea without overpowering. The British East India Company included Shuang teas as one of its common imports to America. In the Boston Tea Party, 10 chests of this tea were destroyed. So it was the second favorite in the New World, maybe. About, or at least it was in the top 10. Yeah. 
And yes, I know there's going to be someone out there that says I'm pronouncing it completely wrong. Oh, yeah. I'm willing to accept that reality that I am pronouncing it completely wrong. Please help me. <laughs> Please. Because <laughs> I'm sh I'm sure. Shuang. Shuang. Yeah. Shuang. Rap saying Shuang. I think so too. Rap saying Shuang. Well, be interesting to research the history of the name. Cheers. Okay. Take a small sip because yeah. it's still seeming. Very hot. Steaming. You don't want to burn yourself. Ooh, ooh. Ah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he did that right before I took a sip. I was thinking, is this acid? <laughs> what is it gonna end? What are you, a goldfish? Wasn't that what they do with wine? Yes. Name. Yes. Pinky like, up. Oh, it's hard with this. Here we go. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what, you needed some air? Did you come up for some air? Okay, it's good. <laughs> you like it? I do. It's very hot though, so I'm not really able to enjoy the full flavor yet. Let me take a normal drink. <laughs> Okay. You it, know, it, in some cultures, slurping is a sign of respect. Oh. That you're enjoying it. Yes. It means that you're really into it. You're enjoying it. This is good, but it's really smoky. Let me try this one. It even says in the description, it's very smoky. I like this. It's smoother. This is better. <laughs> well, this was the most popular one in the 18th century. So that's probably why you like it. <laughs> now, I'll be honest. Bogey. I think if they were both a little stronger, if we would have waited a little longer, we'd get more of the flavor, but hmm. they do taste good. But No, I taste it. You do? Yeah, I taste it. It's just too hot. Maybe that's why. Right. Do you want a cookie? Very you want, well. You want to split the cookie? Yes. <laughs> These are very, very rich. Yes, and I've already had a few today. They smell... Like Cocoa Puffs. Like Cocoa Puffs. I didn't want to say it. But you know what I was going to say. They smell exactly like Cocoa Puff cereal, except just in a very large size. So if you got a huge bowl of cereal and you just drop these in there, it would be like Cocoa Puffs. Hmm. Did I give you the booty back? Great. Hmm, I don't remember. That one's smoky. That one isn't really smoky. Okay, this is the boogie. Okay. This we need to have time. different colored mugs yes. the next time that we do this because the teas are exactly the same. Yep. They're both black teas. They look the same. That's yep. what I mean. They look the yep. same. But you can't really tell. <clears throat> okay. It's hard to split them because they're very crumbly. Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, these would be good in a big bowl of milk. Like Cocoa Puffs. Like Cocoa Puffs, like I said. I mean, it tastes just like them. Right. They're crispy. They're crunchy. They're very airy. Yeah, they're they're, they're not crispy as in, oh, we left them in the oven too long. They're supposed to be like this. That's why they're called chocolate puffs. So it's a meringue that you make with the egg whites. Right. And then you put the sugar in there and the cocoa that you've ground up. Mm -hmm. And then it, it creates, if you're familiar with meringue, it's very light mm -hmm. and fluffy. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, if I hadn't had sugar and I tried this, I think my head would explode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These yeah. are so sweet. They're good, but I cannot eat mm -hmm. another one. They are very good. They're just incredibly sweet. They only have three ingredients in them. Yeah, three ingredients. Chocolate, sugar, and an egg white. So there's a lot of sugar in these. And they take an hour to bake. Yeah, you have to bake them at a low temperature. That way it hardens up because there's no flour whatsoever in it. Without burning. Right. You have to bake it, I think it was 225 for at least one hour. Mm -hmm. One hour to an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. We did these for an hour and it worked out just fine. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't bake them any longer. No. 
they were starting to crack on the top. Right. Everyone's oven's different. Right. But for us, um, an hour, how we did it, it worked out just fine. Just uh, open it, give them a little tap. If mm -hmm. they sound hard, mm -hmm. then they're, they're getting close. And you can always sacrifice one. You can cut one open and see if it's real gooey inside or if it holds its form because you can't, you can't really stick a knife in these because it's just going to break them because mm -hmm. of the hard shell. Mm -hmm. So uh, always plan on just sacrificing one. They're very unique. See what unique. it looks like. They're very unique. Yeah. Back in the day, this would have been a conversation starter to it, serve at your table. It's cheap to make. I mean, the sugar's expensive. Nowadays, but, it's cheap to make. But yeah. But it's difficult because you gotta whip all that. So it would have been mm -hmm. the poor person wouldn't have made these probably. Well, probably not. Plus the chocolate. This would have been mm -hmm. for party mm -hmm. or a nice dessert. Right. Mm. We gotta try to soak it in the tea. And the tea? Mm -hmm. They'd probably dissolve. Not Oops. for very long. Dip it in there like a biscuit and then okay. take it out. Okay, take it out. Well, it ain't saturated yet. <laughs> what does that mean? You just plopped it in there. Is it good? It might give it a chocolatey flavor. Yeah. I like honey in my tea. I never just add sugar to my tea. I, just, I always use honey, but... Let it dissolve. You basically just added sugar in your tea mm, by doing that. Chocolate lapsing tea. Now wow. that actually sounds <laughs> divine. It is dissolving, so... That might improve it. So we use two egg whites, a quarter cup of ground cocoa, mm -hmm. And how much sugar did it cost? A little over a cup of sugar. So the majority wow. in this is sugar. Yeah. That's why I will pay a man $20 to eat a bowl of these cookies straight back to back. Oh, you would get sick. You would get sick. <laughs> yeah, the ER visit would cost a lot more than $20. So it's not really worth the bet. Trust me. <laughs> Don't what? try this at home. Yeah, guess what, sir? You <laughs> now have diabetes. <laughs> Don't sue me for eating these cookies and then going yeah. to the doctor Definitely pace <laughs> and yourself. they tell you you have a condition now. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's pretty much dissolved. Looks like a uh, chocolate tea. Chocolate tea? That's a thing? I'm sure it is somewhere. I've had many vanilla teas. What are you thinking? Tastes like smoky chocolate tea. <laughs> It was better before I did that, though. Really? Yes. It's not my thing. But I I'll would, drink it because I'm thirsty. You'd think chocolate would improve just about anything. Well, there's more sugar than chocolate. I see a film of chocolate on the top. Mm -hmm. The sugar dissolved, but the chocolate didn't. Hmm. You like? I don't have complaints. Okay. Let's switch you then for a second. Oh, that's so much smoother. Right. So uh, I guess you don't want to... Eat cho pure chocolate? Put this in your tea? No, it wouldn't dissolve. It'd take forever. You sure? You sure about that? <laughs> I don't know if it'd fit in the cup. I don't know if I can rip break it in half. It's pretty... It's a lot of chocolate. Yeah, it's it's solid. Well, you know what that means. Just putting the whole thing in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. It might take forever. <laughs> It'll take forever to dissolve. Oh boy. Three years later. Warning, <laughs> Justin is going to be super hyper in about an hour. No, you know what's going to happen? Chocolate sugar overload. I'm going to say, be in a oh, coma. Ron, I have an upset stomach. My tummy hurts. And you're going to say, what did I tell you? Dang it, woman. Dang it, woman. <laughs> exactly. That's what's going to happen. And I already see it coming down the road with my psychic vision. But I'm walking right into the trap. <laughs> hmm. So far, so good. Because nothing's happened yet. <laughs> Later on, oh. I have to make eggs. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk about the bed a little bit. Some people did ask questions about how often to change the hay or the straw, oh. etc. Okay, so changing the straw, I'd recommend doing that twice a year, as long as you don't have bugs. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and another thing. The saying, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. A lot of people think that the sleep tight has to do with the rope beds, that you have to pull the ropes tight. It actually has nothing to do with that. I thought it did. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with that. The first recording of that saying is from the mid-ish late Victorian period, like the 1870s or something like that. By then, most people weren't sleeping on rope beds anymore. In fact, if you were sleeping on a rope bed by the time, that was very weird. That was unusual. You're poor. Not even poor. <laughs> Not even poor people would have done it. If you were sleeping on a rope bed by the 1870s, you must have just been doing it because it was your grandma's bed and you think it's cool. But because most people by that point, they slept on beds with planks on the bottom. Well, that's because they had better mattresses. People had planks mm -hmm. in our time period and before too, but we didn't have good mattresses. Yeah, they, I boards, guess they had really firmer, firmer mattresses. But the boards became more common by then. Mm -hmm. So rope beds weren't a thing by then. But back in the day, sleep tight meant to sleep good. It was just slang for sleeping good. So a lot of things, the words in English have changed. It's the same language, but a lot of the slang words have changed. For example, I didn't even know that bohe used to mean tea back in the day. I didn't either. Yeah, I didn't know that. And so there's a lot of these random words that we've completely forgotten how to use that were used. What are you doing? I'm hungry. He's eating straight up chocolate. <laughs> well, it ain't got sugar like that. That's true. So anyway, anyway, so back in the day, sleep tight meant to sleep good. So before going to bed, your mom, you'd say, sleep tight, mom. Okay, you sleep tight too. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> you know, that's just what it used to mean. And bed bugs, yeah, there was definitely a problem with bed bugs. Um, up until probably the 1920s, really. There still is today. There still careful. is today. Okay, your chocolate is... Uh... Did you see it? Is it still in there? It's... Oh, it's half dissolved. It's halfway. I'll take the other half. How about that? Oh, but you were telling me it was a bad idea, and now you want to do my idea. Yeah, because that's too hard to chew. <laughs> I'm breaking all the tea rolls today. Can I have your spoon when you're done? Yep. I have a feeling the chocolate is heavier than the tea, so it's, it needs to be mixed up. I agree. It might be settling on the bottom right now. <clears throat> Our tea just went from being brown to browner. Yep. With all the chocolate we just put in there. <clears throat> okay. Any better? It tastes like hot chocolate mixed with tea, which is an absolutely <laughs> terrible experiment. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason why there is no hot tea chocolate drink. Well, I'm sure there's some out there somewhere. Maybe. Yeah, sitting on this table right here. <laughs> oh, I'm hungry, but I can't eat them. No. Oh, you're hungry, huh? I'm hungry. Okay, sit tight. Well, we have three heads. Well, we'll have to split it. Uh, fine. I already have the I skillet share. right here with butter in it. <laughs> well, get the cooking moment. Literally, all I have is I have the skillet, I have salt, pepper, dried parsley, and eggs. Well, come on. Okay, okay. Stand here, yeah. Oh, my skillet. Oh, it's gonna be quiet. I'm holding it. I'm yakking all day. I'm getting hungry. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You're gonna make me lose my focus on egg. Now we have a lot of hot coals, so I can. Okay. I'm gonna put this down. Yeah, just like that. Okay, I'll put this down and let's let the butter melt for a bit and once it's hot enough, I'll crack these eggs over there. The best time of the day has arrived. The time to make food, eggs. So here I have three eggs from my dad's yard here and we're gonna have to split it because that's all we got. So I've been waiting for this skillet to get hot. I put some butter on it. That's hot. I'd say that's hot. Okay, let me go ahead and crack these eggs on here. I'm 
something quick. I got to season this real fast. I got salt. Everything is improved by salt. Parsley. And these come from the most spoiled eggs in the Midwest. Guaranteed your money back. I mean, we literally feed them strawberries on Valentine's Day, so they are the most spoiled chickens, and they make the best eggs. Because the ticket and the treat and the secret to good food is happiness. Now for this, I think I do need a trivet. We'll share the plate. How about that? Oh, thanks. Ooh, that can go pop. It has a wood handle, so you can still bear to touch it. If it was iron, there's no way you could touch that. No. But it is a little warm. Uh, nothing like some afternoon tea with eggs. I want some more pepper tea. Yes. You got it? Yep. Good job. Thank you. <clears throat> mm. Let me not put that on the fire. Yeah. I'll get the quartz. Thank you. We like our food with a lot of pepper. Yes, we do. Alright. Took us two minutes <laughs> to make this. I count it three. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'll do better next time. <laughs> Perfect. Mm. Food. Other than sugar. Real food. <laughs> Thank you for cooking these. No, oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> and uh, we're going to say goodbye. <laughs> so thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. Until next time. You have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm. <laughs>